yeah, so I started, uh, whenever Young Gym started opening up the training, we, me and my brother, we were one of the first. I guess that was January or February, I can't remember exactly when, but it was early this year. And so as we've been doing about six months now, um, yeah, and we're just very grateful to have this opportunity. I mean, when we, when Young Jim announced that he was opening up the training, uh, we were so happy because we kind of wanted to, Shiro was already looking like, oh, I want to get into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He was already looking for dojos in the area, but then Young Jim announced that he was going to open it up to everyone. Um, so yeah, going into it, uh, yeah, I had a lot of misconceptions myself, like Young Jim was talking about. You know, I was one of those, you know, in high school and maybe a little bit of college, I was one of those guys, you know, those daydreamers. You know, you're in a situation, you're like, you're in a store, and you're like, oh, what if this store was held up right now? What would I do? You know, be like, oh, I'd be the hero, and I'd kick that guy's butt. I'd, I'd disarm him, I'd take the gun away, you know, and I'd be a hero, I'd be in the newspapers. You know, I was that kind of daydreamer. I would, you know, like, in certain situations, I'd be like, oh, what if this happened? What if that happened? Oh, I'd be the hero. And then you get into these kind of situations, you know, where you get in training, and you realize, like, oh, I'm getting beat up by this 16-year-old kid right now. <laughs> <laughs> and like, oh, yeah, this is, this is, that, if I was in that situation, yeah, that wouldn't happen because I'm, I'm in this situation right now and I'm fighting this 16-year-old kid and he's only had a little bit more training than I have, but I'm getting my, my butt kicked. So you realize, like, like, all that misconception just goes out the window, like Young Jim was saying. Like, you can't fool yourself, you know, because... You think, you, if you even start thinking about that, like, you remember this time in your training, like, oh, I got my butt kicked right there. I was like, I was in some kind of similar situation in training. Oh, I'm going to probably get my butt kicked because I still haven't mastered that. I still haven't, you know, dealt with the situation yet. But um, so it really brings you down to reality. You can't, like, like he said, you can't fool yourself. You can't fool other people because if they're training with you, they know. They, they fought you, you fought them, they beat you, you've beat them, if they're on similar levels. But, um, so yeah, you can't fool yourself. So yeah, that was one of my, my biggest, like, realizations when I started training, is like, yeah, I, I can't, I can't do that. If that situation came up, yeah, I would probably not be able to do anything. I'd, I'd end up shot, or just get knocked out or something. But, um, yeah, so really with training, it gets rid of all the illusion, you know, and Satan loves illusions, Satan is mm. the master of mm. illusion. Yeah. So it's really a good way to just kind of clear your mind of all that fog, all that kind of daydreaming nonsense that you go through, especially in your younger years, you know, you're always, you're sitting in school and you're like just daydreaming about random situations and you can't think that anymore because you know the reality. And another one of my big fears is just, uh, was coming into this is just like, uh, I've never really been much of a sports person, kind of physical person. So at any time I did anything, I always fall behind, you know. I'm always like the slowest person or I can't run as far as other people or I can't do as many push-ups or sit-ups. And so, yeah, when I started, that was one of my biggest hardships was actually doing the 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups at the end. Like, <laughs> I would be doing five while everyone was doing a, ten, a set of ten because I couldn't do them fast enough. So I would be doing like half of what everyone else was doing. And that, I really struggled with that because... You know, I felt like I was, like, failing or something. But uh, so that was one of my big struggles. But really, it doesn't matter. You know, everyone has different levels. You realize that in training. You know, everyone's different physical, different um, kind of, you know, some people are tall, some people are heavier, you know. But uh, so you realize that everyone's at different points. But the main thing with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is that with technique, the, the, the field is level, you know. So I can beat up a heavier guy, a taller guy, or a smaller guy could beat me up if they have more technique. So I, I really realized this uh, when we were doing the summer camp. Uh, Hyung Jin had us uh, roll with all the kids. And so there was uh, these two brothers, uh, the Nguyen, I'm saying their name wrong. Nguyen, Nguyen family. And they're like, you know, probably both of them were like this tall, I guess. And they're like 180, 190, I would say. And uh, so uh, I rolled against the younger brother, and then Shimpol went against the older brother. So they had, you know, a good 30, 40 pounds on both of us. And so you realize at that time, like, like he was overpowering me, like, physically. But because of my technique, I was able to tap him out, and then I was able to defeat him. So I realized, really realized at that point, like, yeah, technique is really what matters. Like, mm -hmm. he was overpowering me just physically. Like, my arms couldn't take his arms. But using technique, I was able to... 
uh, get on his back, and I, I think I yeah choked him out from the back. Um, so you really realized at that point, like that was my turning point. I think was that camp, and then I really 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 realized like the strength of the technique that I was learning, because he was so much bigger than me. I was like, oh crap, I have to go against this big guy, but um, uh, yeah, it was it wasn't that bad. Um, yeah, and really the fear just goes away after a while, especially when you're training. I'm still afraid of Hyang Jim, but <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's going to happen. Um, I'm nice, I'm nice, I'm nice, I'm <laughs> nice. So you, yeah, the, really the fear goes away or, uh, after a while. Um, I remember when I first started, I was really afraid, like I couldn't control my breathing. That was one of the big things is with my breathing. And so when you can't breathe, you get really, really, really tired. Mm. I remember uh, Gideon had the same experience, uh, his first training. He was like super like hyperventilating. Pumped and that, up, yeah. yeah. You get really pumped up and you're like, <laughs> that, that's your breathing, right? Like it's literally, normal. that's how you breathe when you're fighting. Like someone's on top of you and you're trying to push them off and you're breathing like that. So you really have to kind of get past that. And that's mainly just like controlling your like animal instincts because you're like, mm. your muscles are automatically tensing up. Everything's tensing up. Everything's going like 200%, you know, everything's like fast mode right there, you know? So you're breathing fast, your heart's beating fast, your muscles are all tense. So you get really tired. And that, with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, if you're on equal technique level, that's not good. Because if you're on equal technique, sometimes the matches can go for quite a while. <laughs> so if you're like wearing yourself out and then you have to keep going, you're like, oh, I have another, Young is gonna make me roll with that person, Young is gonna make me roll with that person <laughs> after this. So you really have to like get past that because if you don't, you're gonna die. <laughs> so that was my one of my things. So like, if I don't get control of myself, like I'm gonna, I have to keep doing, keep rolling with people. I'm gonna die, and I'm like gonna like pass out from hyperventilating. So that was really one of the things I had to work on myself was just controlling myself. And so I think that's really like with fighting, you have to really control yourself. Because mm. if you're not in control of yourself, the other person's gonna control you. And that's like what Hyungjin was talking about. Like he has so much more technique, so he's gonna control us. But if are on equal technique, the person who's more in control of themselves will win. I think. If you're on equal technique, the person more in control of themselves and their mm -hmm. mind and body is more unified, they're gonna mm -hmm. win. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's a big uh, part, like divine principle, you know, can be related to this is yes. mind and body unity. Yes. If you're not in control of your body, you're going to be hyperventilating. Your muscles are going to be tensing up. You're going to get cramps. Your heart's going to be beating too fast. And uh, you're going to lose. Yeah. So really, I feel like a, a major part that I really took away from uh, learning uh, and training with Young Jim was mind and body unity, getting that kind of like self-awareness, self-composure, and being aware of what my body is doing, be aware like, of where my mind is going, and being in control of that. So I really uh, am so grateful that I could take that away and kind of have that in my own life, that kind of mind and body unity uh, kind of experience and kind of training to better myself in that way. So uh, I'm so grateful to Hyang Jim for training us. And also I want to thank Kyuk Shin Im. Kyuk Shin Im has been so supportive of Hyang Jim's training. He bought the mats, uh. our lovely mats. Thank you so much, Kyuk Shin Im. Uh, and Cook Shim is really supportive of what Kyung Shim is doing with the training. So I'm so, great, so grateful to both of them. Thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God, Ryo. Wow. That's a beautiful point he made. Thank you, Ryo. Did you notice how he said you learn how to control your animal instincts? Yes. Right? Your animal instincts, your natural instinct. Now, how important is that for to fight temptation, folks? Think about that. Right? In your life, when you have an animal instinct or you have a tempt, Satan is tempting you with that physical instinct, you have to be able to fight that with sp spiritual power. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you didn't notice what he just said? Right? He actually is training. While they're doing the physical training, they're losing weight, they're getting harder, some, you know, stronger, some of them are getting six packs. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's the, that's the, those are the accoutrements that you get by training hard. But... At the same time, they're work, working their spiritual muscles yes. to keep themselves strong, keep themselves pure, to keep themselves mentally in the warrior spirit, keep the armor of God on, you know? So beautiful, beautiful.